Well, we're very lucky now to be joined by Zuka Godlimpi, Deputy ANC National Spokesperson, Member of the NEC, and Veronica Menta, National Chairperson of the Economic Freedom Fighters Party. Um, Veronica, let's get started, jump right into it. I mean, you've called this coalition a consolidation of white monopoly over the economy. What do you mean? Who benefits from this new unity government? Yeah, good day, and uh, thank you very much for having us. We're calling this uh, exactly what it is because it does not seek to redress all the atrocities of the past because the DA way it's governing, it has never redressed anything. The levels of inequality, if you were to focus on the Western Cape where the DA is governing, oh, it is very clear that where black people, Africans in particular, are residing, they reside in peak styles. If you were to go to the townships of Kayelicha, Kukule, Tulanga, Nyanga, they live with uh, all the sorts of service uh, delivery that cannot be attended to them. If ever they have sewer spillages, they sit with those sewer spillages for more than two days. But if you go to the leafy suburbs of the Western Cape, where the DA governing white people reside, service delivery comes to them in a matter of two minutes. And to go to the FF Plus, even worse, they have made a demand that Orania, which is designed to only accommodate Afrikaner people who refuse to stay and be part of our society and live with Both black people in particular. How do we go back to such a horrendous and horrible history of people who want to isolate themselves from black people because they see black people as animals. They do not value the life of a black person. Mm -hmm. They do not see us as human beings rather than that of slaves. Therefore, these are the same people whose manifesto is actually driving that uh, 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 employment, the Department of Employment must not utilize regulations in terms of regulating minimum wage. The markets must decide. If you open your factory or you open your shop, you will decide how much you pay workers. There must not be a law imposed upon you on how much you must pay. That means we are being taken back to slavery. The days where we were oppressed, the days where exploitation uh, was not accounted for, the days where white people were doing as they wish and seeing black people as only slaves, but nothing else. And we refuse to recognize and give a decency and respect to such a government. Because it's not a government that is going to be progressive. It's a government that is going to take us back to our past. But then we will see in parliament what will happen. Mm -hmm. But as far as this cabinet, and it is bloated, just to imagine in the fact that you have to increase a number of portfolios simply because you have to accommodate uh, 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 the white supremacists and accommodate the demands that were undermining a black government mm. because you want to be supervised. Why should you even increase cabinet instead of reducing it? Because as far as it stands, South Africa, we are already uh, in a depleted fiscus where we have cut budget in many of our social spending and our economic cluster is battling in, 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 in developing okay. and empowerment of black societies in particular. Creating employment is difficult in and South now Africa. We... Industries are falling apart. We are not establishing any new industries. I All want the to just economic bring... zones. South Sorry, Africa, Veronica, no, to interrupt. No. I just want to bring in uh, Zuko here. I mean, Zuko, what's your response? I mean, the truth is, is that the DA is obviously a largely white-led party. It has voiced opposition to some of the ANC's, uh, what you could consider, black empowerment projects. I mean, given that South Africa's population is overwhelmingly black, is there no concern from the ANC about the messaging to the electorate, to, to all the South Africans? Well, that was the concern of the ANC going to the election. It remained the concern of the ANC going to the negotiation table. But just want us not to be sidetracked by a hyperbole that is not rooted on fact. So the entire critique proceeds from the false impression that the GNU is a bipartisan pact between the ANC and the, and the, and the DA. It is not. It includes 11 political parties. So the DA doesn't have this exaggerated power that people presented to have in that arrangement. And the DA doesn't even have as much 
of a footing in the in the economic cluster, as we have been told. So if the criticism is about industrial policy, industrial policy is still fully under the control of the ANC. I don't see how the DA will supposedly now prognosh the ANC towards the direction that the ANC does in run. In any case, out of the negotiation process, there was a, a, a statement of intent that was the condition for each party joining the GNU. And the DA did try to negotiate away some of the of the founding principles or the, the, the organizing principles of the of the GNU. And their proposals were resoundingly rejected. For instance, they came to the table negotiating that there must be an agreement about sealed mandates, a framework in which each political party would be allowed to pursue its own policy discourse in the in the ministries that are under their control. But that position did not win. It was it was, it was resoundingly pushed back against. Why? It's because the nature of the South African executive as, as, as established by the Constitution is such that it has got to be a single executive of government under the executive authority of the president. And therefore, there can't be sealed mandates. And if you read through the signed statement of intent, which the DA agreed to, it outlines the minimum parameters for policy that this government is going to pursue. And by and large, the consensus was built around the substance of the ANC manifest. There is a commitment to industrial policy. There is a commitment to redress and transformation. There is a, there is a, a, a commitment to sustaining the existing policies. For instance, there is no threat to the minimum wage, even though the DA on its own is opposed to the minimum wage. But it would have to converse above 60 percent consensus in the GNU if it were to ever be able to repeal the, the, the minimum wage. So the ANC and the rest of the progressive black parties within that framework will still be able to defend the policies that exist. We're not building the South African state a new, we're not building a new policy platform. All policies that have existed from 1994 up to date are still in effect and will be the basis of, of, of this government. So the DA could be guilty of all the things that the EFF is saying in the Western Cape, which are true. We agree with them on that one. But the EFF must not commit the mistake of falsely presenting the DA as if it has as much bargaining power in the GNU as it doesn't have. And I must just make the point that the ANC did not wake up in the morning and choose to form a GNU. It was brought to that position by the indeterminate outcomes of the election results. That's one. The second point is the issue about the, the size of the cabinet. People must be careful not to conflate two things. I repeat this point not for the first time. The problem of the argument about the huge public sector wage bill on the one hand and the size of the cabinet. You cannot say South Africa's fiscal problem is a function of adding two more ministries. And ministries are not departments. So we've got to be careful about how we, how we pursue that argument. And in any case, the ANC still has, as it did say uh, through the president before, that its principal position would be a reduced cabinet for efficiency in coordination. But the problem of the GNU brought to bear the reality that politically mm -hmm. you have to, form a, to forge an agreement that all political parties can buy into Mm. And that therefore necessitated to readjust your position. I understand. Uh, Veronica, I mean, obviously we've talked so far mainly about domestic policy. Um, what I do want to ask you is that South Africa has really sort of led this charge in recent years when we're talking about global, reforming global governments, including, for example, giving African voices at the UN uh, Security Council. I mean, the DA uh, is pro-West, it's pro-Israel, it's a anti-Russia. Are you worried that South Africa's foreign policy, obviously its non-alignment historically, could maybe be compromised with this new government? Absolutely. And to demonstrate that uh, this is, is threatening the sovereignty of our country, look at what the DA did just before elections, writing to the U.S. that it must come and supervise South Africa because a black government and a black IEC led uh, by very capacitated black professionals cannot... Uh, deal with the matters of elections without the West supervision. It's always been uh, the ambition of the DA, and in fact, in its DNA, that the West must rule South Africa and it's all of its policies. And also to address some of the issues, to demonstrate that the GNU is not necessarily what um, my colleague is talking about. They say if ever the, the, the DA had to advance any of its policies, it will have to canvas 60% of the ground within the cabinet. 
all of them combined, um, the smaller parties with the ANC, they don't have 60%. They need the DA to have 60% and above. Therefore, the DA can do as it pleases. It can bargain for whatever power it wants mm. if the ANC wants to pass any progressive law. Hence, we said to the, to the ANC, you do not have to go to the far right in order to have a progressive government that is going to deal with the issues of redress. You can go and identify any other black party. We were even clear to say, if you are not favorable to the EFF being in government with you, but please do not go to the DA and an FF plus. As things stands, they are stuck with the DA because the DA is the one that gives it the ANC uh, the bargaining power in terms of that 60% which my colleague is talking about. And earlier on, I was with Helen Zille on Power FM today. Helen Zille says, we are in government and we are there to advance the call that we have made in our own manifesto. Therefore, us firing DGs and firing staff and, and uh, reorganizing the departments that we are going to be in charge of as the DA is only to deal with the policies of the DA. We are not there. We are not um, kind of adopted. We are also in government. Therefore, we are going to make sure that we we advance and we provide the services which we have called upon our, mm. in terms Makes of our money. Uh, so so you I can mean, see that yeah. there is nothing, there is no way out of this uh, uh, grand coalition of the DA and the ANC. The other smaller parties, they are just there, but there is no <laughs> meaningful contribution in terms of bargaining powers that they have. I mean, Zuko, I do want to ask you one thing. Um, I mean, there is one area which the ANC and the DA obviously have very different stands on, that is Gaza. I mean, considering that the South African government went so far as to bring a historic genocide case against Israel, the ICJ, which the DA did not support, does being in bed with the pro-Israel DA not pose a bit of a moral dilemma? It does not. And it only poses a moral dilemma if people are deliberately misunderstanding the balance of power in this government. The stance of the ANC on Russia, on China, on the US, on Israel, on Palestine will remain the same. Why is that? It's because even on the founding agreement of the, of the GNU, in the negotiation, it was ventilated and agreed upon that the policies of the ANC on progressive internationalism that have been adopted in government, they remain the same. Let's count the numbers of what we have in cabinet. There are 32 cabinet ministers. The DA only has six. In what world would an argument be mounted that six people are going to overpower the reasoning of, 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 of 28 people, it's, it's, of, it's of 26 people? It, it's an illogical and hyperbolic position. The position of the, of, of the South African government in Gaza will be articulated by Minister Ronald Namula, who is the Minister of International Relations, who is the very a person who led the Department of Justice in South Africa to file the case against Israel in the in the in the International Court of Justice. That status quo remains. And I must just answer what Comrade Mente is saying. I think Comrade Mente and 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 and, and her, her, her comrades in the EFF have got to familiarize themselves with the statement of intent and not peddle the propaganda of Helen Zille and the DA on how to interpret the statement of intent. It is not true. That it is the ANC that needs to canvas 60 percent. Let's take the Gaza policy, for instance. If the DA were to try to change the position of South Africa on Gaza, the statement of intent says it, in order to repeal an existing policy, they would have to canvas 60 percent of the seats in parliament, not just in the GA, which means that would have to include the members that are held by the EFF and Umkondo. So, as far as the ANC is concerned, it is the right wing DA that has locked itself in a predicament where it cannot openly pursue its, its reactionary policy agenda. In any case, Helen Zille commits the mistake, which the person that you have quoted, commits the mistake of advancing the position that they went with the negotiation label, but pretends as if that position won't be. It did not. That which she says they are going to do could only happen if there was an agreement that the government will be run on the basis of sealed mandates. But even in that context, it would mean the DA would have, as it does not even now, would have no way of constraining the ANC pursuing a progressive internationalism because the ANC controls the Department of International Relations and Foreign Policy. So on that front, the entire proposition is as it arrives. The ANC, by the way, in its meeting with the EFF on the 28th on Friday, 
and the EFF agreed to this plan. Even if the EFF were not to join the GNU, but there would be an open channel of communication and political cooperation between the two organizations on the basis of, 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 of progressive politics. So the GNU was just a framework of establishing government. Even if, by the way, the EFF, the, 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 the DA were to pull out of the GNU with its 86 members, the ANC would still have more than 201 votes in parliament to have a majority. So the DA does not have the, 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 the kind of power that people assume it has. And it will have no effect on the progressive outlook of South African domestic and foreign policy. And that is incorporated in the statement of intent. It is there for everybody to see it is the basis of this government, not the hyperbolic uh, charges that we're being accused of. Um, I want to ask very quickly if I could, if both of you could answer in, in less than a minute. Uh, Veronica first. I mean, I don't think it's uh, controversial to say that some of uh, EFF's policies are quite radical. Nationalisation of key sectors, some comments made about white people, the confiscation of land. Um, do the results of the election show that South Africans don't yet feel ready for such radical shifts? Very quickly. Yeah, so South Africans are ready for the radical shift. Uh, however, as we know that it's a multi-party democracy where people have choices of what they need, but in reality and, and in all honesty, the economy of South Africa will not get anywhere if we do not resolve the issue of land, if we do not resolve the issue of a state bank, if we do not resolve the issue of the financial sectors that are exploiting our consumers in South Africa, if we do not resolve the issue of industrialization and re Surviving all the industries in South Africa which are going to create employment and deal with the issues of poverty. Mm. As things stand, more than 13 million of South Africans that can be working are not working. And the last quarter uh, of uh, the statistics SA in terms of unemployment was uh, pained. They are small businesses. Yeah. Can no longer that should be given to uh, small businesses. Government, government support is not anyway. OK. And, and Zuko, finally, I mean, these were obviously historic elections because the ANC lost its majority for the first time ever since 94. What is it about ANC's policies which are currently not uh, winning the votes? Very quickly. Look, if you listen to what uh, um, uh, Comrade uh, uh, Victoria is saying and you read the ANC manifesto and you read the, the, the signed statement of intent, it basically articulates the same perspective that she's outlining. And that has been the position of the ANC. And she would know that these were our positions when we were members of the ANC of League even before the formation of the EFF. And we've been able to win the day and get those policies to the ANC policy. The ANC's biggest weakness to date has been leverage and a weakness in implementing policies in policy coordination. Mm. And those of us who come up in, in, in the leadership of the ANC, who we observe in the strength from outside, have made the point that we need to improve policy coordination, improve uh, implementation so that we can have better outcomes. But from a, a policy blueprint point of view, the ANC still has um, perspectives that are popular, even with the majority. If we mm. follow the logic of Comrade Veronica, the, the people who are voting for the EFF and who voted for the MK party are essentially voting for those parties because those parties are running on the ANC's historic policy plan. Mm. So the biggest issue the ANC is not the absence of, of a radical policy platform, but the weakness in implementation and, and policy coordination. We appreciate your time, your insight, your experience. That was Zuka Godlimpi, ANC Deputy National Spokesperson, member of the NEC, and Ver Veronica Menta, National Chairperson of Economic Freedom Fighters Party. Thank you both very, very much.